Okay, so. All right, so in the in the first case, p congruent to one mod four, I can uh, flip the thing over. Um, so, you know, the question is, for which primes is this true, and for which primes is this true, right? That's kind of what we're asking. So th this is with you have these small numbers on the bottom. It's really easy, right? Because you're just asking, is p a perfect square of mod three? Well, what are the perfect squares in mod 3. 0 squared, 1 squared, and 2 squared. Actually, except you don't use 0. Okay, so just 1 squared and 2 squared. 1 squared is 1, and 2 squared is 1 in mod 3, right? That's, that's all it is. So, actually, um, essentially, everything is a, is a perfect square in mod 3, right? Except for 0. So, 1 squared, I'm sorry, so not everything. The, the, everything can be squared. The results are just that you get a 1 out of that. So the p, what are we going to say here about this? This is if and only if p is congruent to 1 mod 3, right? That would, be, that would be the case for that. So for example, if p was 7. But of course, 7 wouldn't satisfy this condition. So <laughs> there's several conditions, right? What about this one here, modulo 5? Well, we have to take 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, and 4 squared, right? Well, the results of that are that uh, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is negative 1, and that's all you're going to get. So p is congruent to plus or minus 1 mod 5. Okay? Is everybody following this? So you, what you would have to have, so one case, one case where you win, right, would be p is congruent to 1 mod 4, p is congruent to 1 mod 3, and p is congruent to 1 mod 5. In that case, you win, right? Another case where you win would be p is congruent to 1 mod 4, P is congruent to 1 mod 3, and P is congruent to negative 1 mod 5. In that case, you also win. Okay? Now, let's look at the other possibilities. So if P is congruent to negative 1 mod 4, then this um, first congruence in order to have the Legendre symbol of 3 with respect to p come out to plus 1, when I flip it over, it changes the sign, right? Because they're both congruent to 3 mod 4. This is basically 3 mod 4, right? So in this case, the Legendre symbol of 3 with respect to p is negative 1. I'm sorry, p with respect to 3. I said it right, wrote it wrong. p with respect to 3 is negative 1, and because we have a 5 on the other one, we still keep that as a plus 1. So we win in all of these cases. What else do we win? We also win if p is congruent to 3 mod 4. Ah, so which primes are these where the Legendre symbol of p with respect to 3 would be equal to negative 1? What numbers in mod 3 are not perfect squares? Okay, the Legendre symbol of p with respect to 3 is plus 1 if p is congruent to 1 mod 3. So the other possibility will happen when p is congruent to 2 or negative 1. I think I heard both answers. 2 mod 3. Exactly, right? Remember guys, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 1, 1 is the only thing that is a perfect square. 2 is not a perfect square. So, um, so we, but we would win, basically, if, if p is congruent to 3 mod 4 and 2 mod 3, see we lose and we lose here and here, but that means we win, right? And then, um, of course, p congruent to 1, mod 5, but then we have the same set of conditions with p congruent to negative 1 mod 5, right? 
So you'll have P congruent to 3 mod 4, P congruent to 2 mod 3, and P congruent to negative 1 mod 5. Okay, is everybody with me so far? Where's my notes? Oh my gosh, they're right under here. That's okay. Do you, do you guys see that you're going to get solutions that are unique modulo 60? Mod 3, mod 4, and mod 5, right? Those are relatively prime numbers. 3 times 4 times 5 is 60. So far, I have four ways that we win. Four ways that we get the Legendre symbol of 15 with respect to P to be plus 1. Okay? That's in this case. For both of these to be plus 1. Both of these will be plus 1 in any of those four cases. Right? Either P is congruent to 1 mod 4, and then we have one of these two. We have this with this, or this with the other one. Right? There's two, there's two scenarios there that are good. And down here, we have P congruent to 2 mod 3 with the same two scenarios. So far, so good. Let's look at the other case. Four more cases. <laughs> Four more cases here because um, I'm going to have an A and a B again. P congruent to 1 mod 4. Okay, let's look at that first. So we're trying to get the Legendre symbol of 3 with respect to P to equal negative 1. <laughs> well, I can flip that over. And when I flip it over, I have to get a negative one for, for, there's no sign change on that, because the P is congruent to 1 mod 4. And we need the Legendre symbol of P with respect to 5 to also be negative 1. Okay? So let's think about what those cases would be. So what do we have? We have P congruent to 1 mod 4. That's the case we're in. When does this happen? Right here, yeah. P is congruent to 2 mod 3. And when does this happen? Well, this happens when this doesn't happen, right? Namely, P is congruent to 2 mod 5 or 3 mod 5. So I'm going to do both of those with the same conditions on